As the calendar turns from spring to summer and the temperatures heat up outside, it will heat up inside tonight as one of the most exclusive destinations in South Florida, the Boca Raton Resort and Spa, for the first time, will host a sensational evening of championship boxing featuring fighters from all over the globe. Multivision Media, TV TV Worldwide, and Nelson's Promotions presents an evening of world championship boxing. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Alexander. Tonight you'll get to see one of the top junior middleweights in the world. Kanat, the Kazakh Islam, has rolled up 23 consecutive victories in the junior middleweight division. No defeats, 19 of those wins by way of knockout. Tonight he hopes to take the next step toward what he hopes will be a world title opportunity later this year in his native land of Kazakhstan. He also wants to take home the WBO, NABO, and WBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight titles. It's a pleasure to be working with this evening rising light heavyweight contender, Steve Griffard. Steve, you've seen Kanat Islam in action. What are your impressions? Yes, um, he works the body very well, so it would be very important. That's very important in a 12-round fight. So I'd like to see him do that and then take the body out later, take the head out later in the fight. Scheduled for 12 rounds, our main event for those three belts that I mentioned, and Kanat Islam will be taking on the tough challenge of veteran Mexican fighter Norberto Demonio Gonzalez. Steve, it would be a huge feather in Gonzalez's cap if he could pull off the upset tonight. Absolutely, and um, Gonzalez has also been in, in these type of situations coming in on the B side. He's fought a lot of former champions, so this will be uh, uh, something that he's very used to. Let's send it down to ringside. Here's your ring announcer, Mark Frado. Ladies and gentlemen, our main event of the evening is scheduled for 12 rounds and will be contested for the WBO and ABO and the WBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Championships. It's brought to you by Nelson's Promotions, Raynello Management, and Shirtzu in association with ZR Entertainment and presented to you this evening by Almaty, New Ray Construction, and delivered around the world and live to Kazakhstan, courtesy of Box TV. The main event is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. Joining us this evening is WBO President Francisco Paco Varcarcel. And joining us in the ring is Supervisor Joe Hernandez. It's also sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. And joining us here in the ring is Supervisor George Martinez. The bout is sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission. Once again, the commissioners are Dr. Mark Williams, the chair, Dr. Wayne Kearney, Marco Lopez, and Terso Martinez. The executive director is Paul Waters. The assistant executive director is Frank Gentile. The judges for our main event this evening are Rocky Young, Toby Tamarkin, and Mark Streisand. And controlling the action at the sound of the bell, your championship referee this evening is Frank Santori Jr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again live from Boca Raton, Florida. 12 rounds for the WBO, NABO, and the WBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Championships. Live from South Florida, it's go time! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at an even and ready 154 pounds. He brings with him an impressive professional record, 23 victories against only eight defeats, 13 big wins by way of knockout. Wearing black, trimmed with gold, desde Nueva Leon, Mexico. Damas y Caballeros, presentando Norberto Demonio Gonzalez. And ladies and gentlemen, his undefeated opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 153.8 pounds. His undefeated professional record, 23 bouts, 23 victories. 19, coming by way of knockout. 
wearing the sky blue, white, and gold of Kazakhstan. Now living, training, and fighting out of Paoki, Florida. He's the reigning WBA Fede Latin and WBO Intercontinental Super Welterweight Champion. He's currently ranked number four in the world by the WBA, number six by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, Kanad Kasak is live. All right, gentlemen, we're all the instructions dress room. Your trunks were, his trunks were low. Keep your clothes here above. Keep your clothes above this line. If I say stop, stop. Say break, take a step back. Questions, questions, good luck. All right, here we go. Set for 12 rounds of action. The junior middleweight division. Three belts on the line. NABO, WBO, and WBA Intercontinental Championship. Here's the tail of the tape. As you've got not his 26 years of age against 36 years of age for Gonzalez. The weight's relatively the same. Slight advantage for Gonzalez. The height, the same. The reach advantage by two inches goes to Gonzalez. All right, here we go. Set for action. All right, here we go. Scheduled for 12, this is round one. Kanat Islam taking on Norberto Demonio Gonzalez. Kanat's coming out and already uh, establishing his jab right away as soon as he comes out. I like that. And Islam is certainly one of those body hunters. He loves to punch to the body, Steve. Yeah, and that's, and that's um, very important when you're in here for 12 rounds. You wanna try and knock some of the wind out of there and uh, take advantage of that later in the fight. Kanad Islam looking very relaxed, kind of like his stable mate, Turov, in the last bout we did. Yeah, he's doing a lot of bouncing around, but he's doing a lot of bouncing around, but maybe he's just trying to find his spot. You can see Kanat Islam wearing the colors of the flag of his country, Kazakhstan, white, blue, and gold. Norberto Gonzalez in the black trunks with the gold trim. Can I come um, landing a nice lead hook there? And Gonzalez coming out in typical Mexican fashion, Steve, aggressive, trying to land a big punch. But he's a veteran. He knows that he can't just totally leave himself open against a power puncher like Kanad Islam. No, definitely. He's taking his time. He's trying to um, land his jab as well. And um, yeah. He's coming in here to fight and to win, just like Kanad is. Quick shot on the inside there by Islam. Tries the left hook, but comes up a little bit short. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, Kanad move his head and move his head a little bit on his way inside. But when you see Kanat taking the lead, that is a bad sign for Gonzalez because the only chance I would think he'd have is to be able to pressure Kanat and nullify a lot of his punches. Absolutely. Absolutely, but right now it, it looks like both guys are kind of filling each other out and, and looking was, for their mark. There was a quick right hand just a moment ago by Gonzalez. It hit Islam high on the top of the head, but no damage. Yeah, Gonzalez is a, is a, is a game opponent. He's coming here to win, and he lands a big shot. They both do. Referee Frank Santori Jr. admonishing Kanat Islam for hitting on the back of the head, which is, of course, a foul. Gonzalez landed a nice left hook. This is a pretty even round so far. It really is. Neither man has really taken the play in this round. Islam has uh, been moving forward, but really hasn't been that effective as far as landing hard, clean punches. Kind of a feeling out round for both guys. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see uh, Kanad, uh, I'd like to see Kanad um, settle down a little bit. And that's the end of round number one. Coming to you live from the Boca Raton Resort and Club here in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. There's a good look at Robert, Roberto Demonio Gonzalez, the demon in Spanish.
from Nuevo Leon, Mexico. The veteran with 23 wins, eight losses, 13 of his wins coming by way of knockout. And there you see Kanat Islam, Nelson Lopez Jr. giving him instruction in his corner. And he's another fighter that uh, bypasses the stool. He likes to stand. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to see him settle down this round. I, I really would. I think he was bouncing around just a little bit too much. But um, I'd like to see him uh, settle down and start setting those shots up right behind that jab and doing some of that great body work that he normally does in the past. Yeah, Nelson Lopez Jr. kind of reminds me of, of Kevin Rooney when he was working with Tyson all those years ago because no matter how good the performance is, he's always saying, ah, he's got to be better at this, he's got to be better at that. But that's the kind of trainer you want. Definitely, definitely. They keep you um, focused and motivated. You know, you never get too, you, you never want to get com too comfortable in this sport. Cannot put on a boxing lesson in his home country of Kazakhstan last October, winning a 12 round decision over Patrick Alate. Very tough fighter from Africa. Yeah, and those are the, the type of fights that prepare you for those big, big title fights down the road. Briefly, you saw Cannot switch to the southpaw stance. Yeah, um, it looks like he wants to give his opponent something to think about. You know, he didn't stay there long. It was a nice body shot by Kanat. Yeah, Norberto was uh, looking for maybe a foul from the referee, but veteran referee Frank Santori Jr. had nothing to do with it. Clean body shot. There's a counter hook by Gonzalez. Caught Kanat on the chin. Yeah, I think Kanat needs to keep going to that body, and, and that, that head's going to be there. That head's going to be there later. He needs to just focus on the body right now. Counting down under two minutes to go here in this second round, scheduled for 12. Both fighters landing some crisp punches in that exchange. Yeah, Kanat looked like he really hurt him to the body. But Gonzalez is coming back with some hard shots himself. Both fighters trying to use good head movement, slipping, ducking punches. And you can see them tied up. Referee Frank Santori Jr. calls for them to break. Telling Kanat not to use his shoulders on the inside. A lot of fighters try to get away with that. Has anyone gotten away with that with you, using that shoulder inside with you? I mean, you know, if you hang around this sport a long, a, a long enough, you're going to um, have somebody that's going to do it here. And then the refs, you know, the refs have a tough job. They can't see every little thing that happens in there. Light heavyweight contender Steve Giffard joining us this evening. I'm Bob Alexander. So happy that you're with us. Yeah, this Coming to you live from Boca Raton. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. You're doing a great job, Steve. We're glad to have you. But next time, let's see you in the ring, OK? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I, I hope uh, Nelson Promotion comes back here um, when I'm healthy and I can uh, perform here. In the ring right now, Kanat Islam and Noberto Gonzalez counting down under 30 seconds in round number two. Both fighters landing a little bit of thunder here in this round. Oh, yes. And you have James Kirkland here studying this fight. Yeah, James Kirkland. Uh, Going to have a copy of this tape. I can guarantee he's going to be studying. Absolutely. Kanat Islam, who finishes with a little bit of a flourish in the last couple seconds of that round two, scored with a quick combination, hook uppercut. No damage done, really, to Gonzalez. Both fighters had their moments in that round, but still looked like Kanat was pretty much in control. Yeah, I'd like to see Kanat um, go to that body a little bit more. He, he really needs to focus on that body a little bit more. There again, you see Kanat Islam in the corner, taking instruction from Nelson Lopez Jr. There you see right there, he's telling him, use those combinations, keep your hands in tight, and let your punches go. Yeah, Nelson Jr., he holds his camp in uh, Pahokee, Florida. There's not really much to do out there, really, so that is a good place to uh, um, go out there and train and stuff. Yeah, one thing you don't want to have a training camp in, in the middle of you know, Las Vegas, Las Vegas or <laughs> New York or somewhere like that where there's so much to do. There's no distractions in Pahokee. You and I have both been there. Absolutely. We know. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing but rabbits. Gators, and, I think. Yeah, gators and uh, <laughs> a lot of sugar cane. 
and some really, really tough sparring and training for these Kazakhstan fighters, and it's prepared them very well for tonight's event. Yes, it has. As we saw, John Koshturov and our co-main get a spectacular third round knockout over his opponent, and now here, Kanat Islam, possibly in line for a world title later this year. First, though, he has to deal with the business at hand. And yeah, that's I, Roberto Gonzalez. Yeah, I'd like to see Kanat um, um, use more feints. And on top of that, he kind of backs up with his uh, chin in the air. You know, in the amateurs, you see a lot of Kazakh fighters um, fight with their chin in the air. So it's probably it's a, it's another one of those um, things that he brought from the amateurs, from having so many amateur fights. He's programmed to doing that. So they, his coaches are really going to have to work on that. Some real slick head movement, fainting by Kanat Islam. Looks like he's having a pretty good time in there, smiling at his opponent. Sometimes, though, you don't want to be doing that with a veteran because if your hands are down and your mouth is open from a smile, you could really take a shot and put a crimp in your big plans. Oh, definitely. I mean, this is a, a risky business, you know? One shot can, can uh, change how the fight's going completely. Well, heavyweight Mike Bolligan found that out on our undercard as he was almost knocked out in the third round. Came Definitely. back to win a decision, but boy, he had to earn it. Kanat's going to really need to pick his hands up. I mean, his hands are, are a little too low for my liking, but that was a great body shot. That was a great left hook to the body. That's really his signature punch is that left hook to the body. Then he'll come up with a right hand and a left hook, but Ooh, another that, street right that left body. hook to the body, man, I tell you, he really puts hurt on people. Yeah, in 12-round fights, he, he's got to keep doing that right now early. Invest early, and then he can um, worry about the head. There's a little shot to the head, a little left hook that landed flush, but not a whole lot of power on it. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't really like when fighters keep their hands so low like that. But can cool. I... Kanat's not really a one-punch knockout fighter. He's a kind of a fighter that breaks you down, you know? He invests in that body, and then later on in the fight, he gets you out. But he does have, a, um, he does have 19 knockouts, though. So he's a, he does a good job at breaking these guys down. Ref referee Frank Santori. Frank Santori Jr. Doing a good job stepping in and warning Kanat for a low blow. And that is the end of an active round number three. Well, coming up later this summer, June 24th, 25th, and 26th in Tampa, Florida, it's the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame with year number eight of their induction. Some great inductees that will be put in, including former heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Moore. We've got former junior middleweight champion, Winky Wright. Charles J., the great media guy, is here tonight. He's one of our guests. You see Frank Santori Jr. in the ring refereeing this bout. He fought Sugar Ray Leonard back in the day when Leonard was in his prime. He was a great amateur fighter. He's been a great referee. Frank Santori Jr. was also inducted in the Hall of Fame two years ago. So we invite anybody that wants to come and enjoy a full weekend of boxing action with some greats. You come to www.floridaboxinghalloffame.com for all the information. All right, here we go. Round number four, scheduled for 12. Kanats pump, come, comes out pumping that jab. I like that. He's a fighter, Steve, that just gets more active as the fight wears on. It just seems every round he picks up his punching output more as he goes. And that's what he's got to do to wear down Roberto Gonzalez. Yeah, and and he's uh, he puts a lot of educated pressure, is what I like to call it, on these guys. He's always in their face, um, and he's always throwing something. It's not always a hard shot, but it's there. It's touching you. And again, Roberto Gonzalez, that wily veteran, Throwing a couple counters there, just giving something Kanat to think about. Right hand to the body by Gonzalez does not appear to phase Kanat Islam. Islam 23 and 0, 19 knockouts. Yeah, it, it, Islam 
Oh, it looks like there was a headbutt there, possibly. Yeah, and that's exactly what caused the problem for Kanat in his last fight. Scored a first round knockout, but he got a bad cut over his eye back in February, which caused him to take several months off from his training. His first action tonight since that cut. Yeah, he really needs to uh, be careful with that head. There you see Kanat opening up with a nice looking combination. Didn't land everything flush, but that's the kind of punches that Islam throws as the fight moves on. Yeah, uh, he, he, oh, great left hook. Nice left Kanat. hook that time. He looks Another like he's, left hook. He looks like he's starting to break um, Gonzalez down. Yeah, his punch output is starting to up, and he's also putting more power behind his shots at this point. Just over a minute to go in the fourth round. A big right hand that time by Kanat Islam. Yeah, and uh, and he's backing Gonzalez up, so he's he's making him have to use his legs. That's gonna um, that's gonna be a big factor later on in the fight if he's still around. Well, I said it before, Steve. Oh, one, one of our undercard fights. If you see a Mexican fighter backing up, that's a bad sign for him. Mexican absolutely. fighters are are pressure fighters. Absolutely, absolutely. Cannot. Um, I think he heard him er a little bit earlier there to the body. Again, beautiful defensive work by Kanat Islam, slipping punches and then letting a left hook go at the end of Gonzalo's attempt for a combination. Under 30 seconds to go in round number four. Yeah, Kanat is finally starting to um, find his target there with both hands. Uh, it looks like um, Gonzalez's face is starting to uh, bust up a little bit. Now that steady jab oh, that is body coming. Shot hurt. After the body shot, the jab is coming two and three at a time. Kanat Islam taking full control of this bout at the end of round number four. Boy, you can see the redness, the swelling on the face of Norberto Gonzalez as he took quite a battering in that fourth round. Yeah, that was some great body work by uh, Kanat. All right, some of the action in that round coming up. Steve, take it away. Yeah, um, you see over here, Kanat um, sets everything up with the jab and it goes down to the body. You know, his shots are not all major power punches, but he touches you, touches you, and then boom, when you least expect it, he comes to the body. Gonzalez lands a nice left hook there. See, he faked with that jab and came with that straight right. Yeah, when you get that steady jab, Steve, in, a, in an opponent's face, it just throws him off his game plan. He, he has to deal with something that he doesn't want to deal with, and that opens up everything else. The jab is so key. Yes, and especially when you have a guy like Gonzalez, I mean, who's used to coming forward. And also, Gonzalez is backing straight up to the ropes, so Kanak can use that to get him on the ropes and start working the body some more. Bob Alexander and Steve Giffard, light heavyweight contender, bringing you the action tonight from the Boca Raton Resort and Club in Boca Raton, Florida. Kanat Islam moving into the fifth round, scheduled for 12. Three belts on the line this evening, the NABO and WBO Junior Middleweight and the WBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Championships. Oh, great left hook to the body and then back to the head with Kanat. I like that shot that he just threw there. He's mixing it up. This is so reminiscent of the performance against Patrick Alate back in October of last year in Kanat's native Kazakhstan. Started a little slow and then the punches began to flow and it was body head, body head, body head all night long. Yeah, Kanat knows that he's in control and um, he's doing what he wants right now. He, he, uh, I'd like to see him use a little bit more uh, angles after, after some of those combinations. Yeah, because he's going to get a lot more in return from a guy like James Kirkland if they ever do face off in the ring. Oh, yeah. Then he's getting tonight from Gonzalez. Definitely. He's with a guy like Kirkland. He's definitely going to have to use his angles. He's going to have to keep his hands up. He can't get care careless with a guy like that or else he'll really be in trouble. He is starting to work some beautiful combinations, though, as we're just over a minute left in the fifth round. Islam in full control of this one, starting to really open up. And there again, you see 
Gonzalez complaining about the butt, and uh, that's a dangerous move right there. Yeah, Gonzalez looks like he might be cut over that right eye. But you never stop the action, Steve, when it comes to a situation like that. Because you drop your hands, you're eligible to get hit. They say protect yourself at all times. When you turn yeah. around and complain to the referee, you can take a knockout shot. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. And um, it's the fight business. Protect yourself at all times. I mean, we've seen that in some major fights where the guy goes to speak with the referee. Then he ends up getting clocked for not paying attention. And you see Dr. Jerry Obed. One of the ringside physicians here this evening in the state of Florida. That cuts in a bad spot right over the eye. And it's flowing. It's a, it really is flowing some blood. So it's going to be interesting to see what Frank Santori Jr. rules here. Was it an accidental headbutt? Was it a punch? That's yeah, going looked, to go a looked, long way in determining what happens in this fight. It it looked it looked like it was a, an accidental headbutt. Um, all right, Dr. Obed's going to let this fight continue. We are just under a minute left in round number five, scheduled for 12. Roberto Gonzalez is cut and bleeding, but he's very game. He's trying to stand in there and slug with Kanat Islam. Really, yeah. it really is his only chance. Yeah, and if I'm a, if I'm Kanat in this situation, I'm going to get that left jab pumping, because uh, and I'm going to work on that cut. I'm going to keep working on that cut. That cut is over the right eye of Gonzalez and that is a dangerous spot because that blood can flow into the eye and cause the blindness for the fighter who's cut. Now, there's two warnings against Kanad Islam presumably for a low blow. One more low blow and Frank Santori Jr. just very well what may well take a point away. Yeah he's gonna have to really be cautious there. When you get warned like that it kind of does something to you mentally especially if you're landing you're already landing great shots, doing nice works to the body. Kind of uh, messes with you. You can see the kind of disgusted look on the face of Norberto Gonzalez. He knows he has a bad cut. He's been hit a couple times low, so he is a bit frustrated right now. But the question is, does he have the proper cut man in his corner to stop that cut? It's not so much what you use on it, Steve. It's the pressure you put on it. Absolutely, the pressure and also, who is your cut man, you know, because your cut man, um, you have to make sure he has some experience with it because you only have a minute to do, to patch that up. Less than a minute, I mean, you're going to take away some seconds when they're walking into the ring. So it's pretty amazing what they do. Everybody has a very important job when it comes to being in that corner. And there's a lot of uh, big name fighters, world champions that have paid a lot to have a good cut man in their corner and it comes in handy when it's needed. Definitely. All right, we approach the sixth round here at the Boca Raton Resort and Club. Kanat Islam trying to maintain his undefeated streak at 23-0 with 19 knockouts, taking on Roberto Gonzalez, trying to make a name for himself by pulling an upset against the undefeated fighter from Kazakhstan. Yeah, Kanat really needs to start Working on that eye. He switched southpaw now. So let's see what he does from this stance. Does that does that really work, Steve? I mean, you see a lot of fighters do it, but they don't seem to stick with it. Yeah, I mean, it does. It gives the fight. It gives you, you know, you, it gives you something to think about right there. You know, you're like, whoa, what's going on here? So sometimes you see him do it just to try and confuse their um, opponent, maybe even buy time. But. Right now, it doesn't look like Kanat needs to buy time. He's doing whatever he wants in here. No, he's totally in control. He can land whatever he wants to the head and to the body. He's got a cut fighter in front of him. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see. I'm sure Kanat wants to go and uh, get a knockout and make a, make a statement in front of Kirkland, because Kirkland is here um, watching. So you know he wants to look very impressive. Letting his hands go now. A flurry of punches, probably seven eight nine ten punches in a row by Kanat Islam some landed some didn't but he is in full control of this bout with just under a minute and a half to go see yeah. Gonzalez still complaining about headbutts but he's taking some punishment as well yeah he's looking for some help from the referee when it comes to the butts the low blows anything that's close you're gonna see him complain to try and get an edge yeah he's gonna have to go and get that stitched up afterwards but he's still fighting back Still fighting back and he's still coming back 
um, strong. So we'll see. He's definitely not here to uh, give up. Now Islam sticking to his game plan, going to the body, using his jab. Every once in a while, a nice little flurry along the ropes. Another great body shot there by um, Kanat. Body punches are an investment. Investment for the later rounds. Pound the body, the hands start dropping. Fighters get tired, they get hurt. And it leads to big opportunities. That's why great trainers accentuate going to the body so much. It is good that Kanat. And there he is getting a warning now. Kanat getting a warning for using his head. Yeah, I didn't really see a headbutt there, but. They were working in close, but I'm, I'm with you, Steve. I didn't really see a headbutt in that instance. Yeah, Kanat, Kanat um, leans forward a lot. But there I don't think he's intentionally doing it. But he does lean forward a lot. There was a good shot of that right eye with the blood flowing out of it. That cut working against Norberto Gonzalez. And again, his corner going to have to try and uh, patch this fighter up. If he's going to continue, we are at the halfway point of this scheduled 12-round bout. Yeah, there you go. You see um, Kanat working on that left eye, landing that straight right hand to the head. And that left hook to the body is key. Um, he's got to keep, he's got to stay on that body. This guy has a tough chin. I think the body is going to be what sets up the knockout later. It's good that Kanat's getting the rounds. But I think he wants the knockout to make a statement tonight, especially in front of James Kirkland. Well, he went 12 rounds last October. One round knockout win in February of this year. And Kanat Islam now moving into the second half of a scheduled 12 round bout. NABO, WBO, and WBA Junior Middleweight Intercontinental Championships at stake. I'd like to see Kanat um, really uh, step it up this half of the fight and and get this guy out of here, you know? Islam, at this point, got to be well ahead on all the judges' cards. Absolutely, I have him ahead. Gonzalez, game, hanging in there. Every once in a while, he'll answer with a flurry of his own. But for the most part, Kanad is able to do pretty much what he wants in there. Oh, yes, absolutely. There's a quick jab by Norberto Gonzalez. And, and uh, Gonzalez doesn't seem like he's trying to go anywhere. He wants to stay here and he wants to fight. He's, he's a tough, tough um, opponent. Well, he's a veteran. He's cool. got Great 31 fights, 23 wins, 13 of those wins by way of knockout. So he's no slouch. Oh, yes. Not still putting on that pressure. And, and coming in behind that jab. He's doing some nice work with that jab. That's one thing, Nelson Lopez Sr. of Nelson's Promotions, he will not put together mismatches. He likes to put together guys that come to fight these bigger name opponents, give it their all, and try and pull off an upset. Absolutely. And that's how you have to do it, you know? And, that, and that's, um, that's how you build fighters and, and make great shows so people can come back. The fans will remember that. Islam not really attacking this round, more or less working on his defense, moving his head a lot. Every once in a while comes the jab, and actually Gonzalez is having a pretty good round right now, Steve. Yes, he is. I really would like to see, um, maybe Islam's taking the round off, I'm not sure, but I'd like to see him step it up and uh, possibly get this guy out of here. And Alberto Gonzalez has shown that he has a penchant oh, for going great there. Shot. Great right hand, straight down the pike from Kanat Islam. One of the better punches of the night for Kanat. Yes, he's back on his toes. He's still bouncing, giving him a different look. Oh, nice right hand nice by Alberto Gonzalez. <laughs> Yeah, Gonzalez looks like he's getting a little bit stronger as the rounds go on as well. Oh. A good round for him. Cannot perhaps taking this round off. I would say it's most definitely the best round of the fight so far for Norberto Gonzalez. Absolutely. 
That's the end of round number six. Yeah, Kanata, Kanat, I think he's getting a little too comfortable in there. He needs to, uh, he really needs to step it up this half. I know he's um, winning all these rounds pretty much already, but, you know, you have Kirkland here who's watching. You have like, all the other champions who's also watching because of, that are um, in the division. So he really, he has a lot at stake here, and he really needs to look good. He needs to win, but he has to look good doing so. So if you were in his corner right now, if you're Nelson Lopez Jr., as you see him uh, giving instruction, what would you be telling him to do coming out in the eighth round? Well, I'd tell him to keep working on that cut. I think that's uh, free money there. Oh, here you go. You see you see both guys landing overhand rights there. But um, it looked like Kanats had a lot more effect than Gonzalez did. And uh, uh, Gonzalez landing a nice overhand there. Gonzalez, that was a great round for Gonzalez. That was his best so far of the of the um, fight. No question. As we move into round number eight, Kanat Kazakh Islam wearing the white trunks with the light blue trim, colors of his home country of Kazakhstan. And you see Norberto Gonzalez, black trunks, gold and white trim. By the way, I have to give a lot of um, credit to Gonzalez's cut, man. He's doing a really good job with that cut. That's a great point, Steve, because that thing was flowing like a waterfall when he got the cut. And since then, the last couple rounds, it's been held in check. Oh, definitely. Oh, great double hook by Kanat. Kanat trying to turn up the heat here in the eighth round. Perhaps, he really needs to. Perhaps do what Steve wants him to do, try and go for a knockout here. Yeah, I mean, just put punches in bunches. He needs to win in spectacular fashion. Kanat now starting to move forward for the first time in the last couple of rounds. A little more active with the pace. A little more intention you can see in his face. Not clowning around anymore, not playing. He's in there to score some big time punches and try and put some hurt on his opponent, Gonzalez. Definitely, he's coming in and he's landing some hard stuff to the body and to the head. Now Islam with that slight smile, he backs up, slips some punches from Gonzalez. Halfway gone through this round number eight. Yeah, I really want to see Kanat pick it up here. Nice jab to the body by Gonzalez. It's, it, um, you see now that Kanat's the one backing up and Gonzalez is the one coming forward. Well, it's been an interesting round, Steve, because Kanat came out very strong in the first half of the round, but now he's kind of backing off. He's playing defense here. Well, I'll tell you, it does a lot to a fighter when you're hitting them with your best shots and your opponent keeps coming, you know? It does a lot to a fighter mentally. And we'll see. We'll, only time will tell. Just, um, we'll see if this is what's happening with Kanat. Nice combination that time by Gonzalez landing on Islam. Islam waving his hand, saying, no, you didn't hurt me. Yeah, uh, Kanat really needs to stay focused here because Gonzalez can really start stealing some of these late rounds. Gonzalez coming on with a flourish here as we move down under 30 seconds in round number eight. If, if I was um, if I was uh, Kanat's corner, I would be telling him to take advantage of those times when this guy's when Gonzalez tries to stop and talk to the ref. You shouldn't be stopping unless the ref tells you to do so. Once again, that eye starting to trickle just a little bit, but a good job by Gonzalez's corner keeping the fighter in the fight since that six-round headbutt. So Kanat Islam going to his corner. There you see the work being done. You can't see the cut because it's on the right eye. Yeah, the cut man is doing a great job. There he is. You can see him using that end swell, that piece of iron invented by the late great Hall of Famer Angelo Dundee. Used it in the Sugar Ray Leonard Tommy Hearns fight back in 1981. A lot of trainers take advantage of that cold steel, which helps keep the eye from swelling where the fighter can't see, Steve. Absolutely. Oh, here you go. You see um, Kanai using that shoulder roll and uh, slipping some of those shots. Nothing really landed until that um, last lead jab, but Gonzalez had a nice rally there. You see it again, landing a flush one, two, and a left hook. Kanai using that elbow to push him off. 
I saw just a tiny little bit of frustration in Kanad Islam's face as the last round ended and he went to his corner. Yeah, oh, nice shot overhand. Yeah, it seems like he kind of abandoned the body. He's, maybe he's uh, headhunting a little bit too much. Um, I think he does a lot of great work to the body. He should he should have really stayed down there. Round eight of a scheduled 12 rounder. But like we said, um, um, Gonzalez is a game opponent. He's been in there with tough guys, big punchers like Charlo and uh, Lubin. And, um, you know, this, this is not his first rodeo. He's a veteran. Absolutely. He's been on this, uh, been in this rodeo quite a while. Good, solid fighter. But when Kanad Islam opens up, Steve, when he throws that double jab, as you see he does there, and he goes to the body, it's really all his fight at that point. Oh, absolutely. His, I think, in my opinion, Kanat's best um, punch is that left hook to the body. Agreed. And you see Islam just kind of pawing with the jab. You can just see he wants to put something strong in there. Now going back, clowning just a little bit, moving his head well. Oh, nice shot. And you see Gonzalez shaking his head there. Not you didn't hurt me. Most of the time when they shake their head, though, it means you did hurt them. <laughs> Absolutely. You see that eye starting to um, leak again. Islam putting the pressure on Gonzalez against the ropes. Trying to take advantage of that cut. Quick right hand by Gonzalez, but it does not affect Islam. I'd like to see a Kanat put his put put it um, punches and bunches. I didn't see a, a headbutt there. I didn't there. see a headbutt there. I tell you what. There you go. He that's puts what your he hands to do. down like that. And a guy like Kanat Islam is going to come in there and cold cock you. He had every right to go in there and throw punches. And I'm sure his trainer Nelson Lopez is going to tell him exactly that. Absolutely. You see Gonzalez holding on. Islam frustrated here. He wants to fight. Gonzalez wants to hold. Yeah, Kanat looks very frustrated here right now. But he needs to keep his composure. And he, he needs to, he can't let Gonzalez get him out of his game. And you can see Gonzalez leaning forward with his head. He could possibly uh, headbutt Kanat Islam. Very dangerous spot to be in. Oh, big Islam. shot. Big shot by Islam. He does let his punches go oh, as nice we angle. move toward the end of this round number eight. Getting a little sloppy in there as Gonzalez trying to hold on and com still continuing to complain to the referee. That does absolutely nothing, Steve. The referee makes his call. He's not going to be swayed by any theatrics. Yeah, you, you really need to um, stay focused. You, all you have to do is worry about fighting and let the referee do, do his job. Kanat did a good thing there by jumping on the guy while he was talking. You can see yeah. the frustration. Steve, look at yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, you see, and, and this is what I was talking about. Kanat jumped right on him when he started talking. You can't, you can't let him off the hook there. You don't stop until the referee tells you to stop. So that was a good move by Kanat. But he looks very frustrated, and he needs to make sure he just keeps his composure and, and keep doing what he was doing earlier in the fight. You remember some of the uh, frustration in the fight with Floyd Mayweather not too many years ago. His opponent was upset about something, dropped his hands to complain to the referee, and Floyd laid him out, put him down and out, and that was it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Protect yourself at all times. That's the name of the game. And looking into the corner of Noberto Gonzalez, and perhaps the corner might be thinking of calling a halt to this bout. Frank Santori Jr., the referee calls time, so Dr. Jerry Obed of the Florida State Boxing Commission can take a look at that cut and determine whether or not Gonzalez can see to protect himself. That's the big issue here. Absolutely. And it appears Dr. Obed is going to let the fight continue. So here we go. Round 10 of 12. Three title belts on the line. Kanat Islam trying to maintain his undefeated mark. Now he smells blood, literally. Yes. 
and this is what I wanted him to do about a round or two ago. I wanted him to pick, pick up the pace and make a statement. And that's what he's looking to do now. Keep. Well, I tell you. It, uh, he needs to keep fighting. He needs to stop and fight. Oh, man. Uh, Nelson Lopez Jr. is probably having a coronary at this point because every time Gonzalez drops his hands to complain, his fighter should be throwing punches right there. Absolutely. He needs to keep fighting and keep throwing. Roberto Gonzalez trying to go toe to toe right now with Islam, but he is taking the much worst end of the punishment. Absolutely, and his eyes is, is just getting worse. Islam perhaps trying to set things up for a late round knockout. Yeah, like I said earlier, you know, Kanad is not a one punch knockout uh, fighter, but these the second half of the fight is where he, sh he normally does his best work. That blood flowing again. Yeah, he's working on that jab. I'd like to see him put a little bit more behind the, that jab and work on that eye. Cannot. Nice shot to the body. That left hook is just devastating to the body. Yes, he's putting a lot of pressure on the guy. It looks like there's some blood around um, Gonzalez's left eye as well. Yeah, his face. I mean, you want to talk about. Uh, Punishment. You can just see it all over the face of you know, Roberto Gonzalez. You know, at this point, his corner needs to think, is it really worth it to let him keep taking this type of punishment? Um, he's lost almost all the rounds. Um, they really have to think about that, you know? Do, yeah. do they really want him taking any more shots like this? Yeah, his face is just crimson at this point, Steve. Yeah, I hate to see the guys um, take punishment like this. But there's so much pride, especially with these Mexican fighters, if they can go the distance, sometimes that's just as good as winning the fight to them. And, and a lot of the times, too, the journeymen, they, um, this is how they feed their family. So if they do get stopped, they get a suspension, maybe a 30, 60, 90 day suspension. So that's taking food off the um, table for their family. So they come in and they're trying to win as well. Counting down toward the last 30 seconds of this 10th round, Kanat Islam, Covered in blood, but it's not his. It's his opponent's. Yeah, not his at all. The game, Roberto Gonzalez. Yeah, I'd like for um, Gonzalez's corner to really, I mean, he's really going to feel this tomorrow. Yeah, he's going to have to have some major work done on those eyes, especially that right eye. We move toward the 11th round. The question is, will Roberto Gonzalez's corner allow him to come out? Florida State inspectors always do a good job keeping an eye on these fighters in the corner. Goes a long way to deciding whether or not a fighter is going to be able to continue in a situation like this. Yes, um, two more rounds to go, so let's see if uh, Kanat can pull out the KO victory or if he goes 12 rounds. Well, he'd certainly like to get that knockout, Steve, but if he doesn't, that's two out of three fights where he goes 12 rounds. He shows that he's got the stamina. He's got the skills where he can handle a 12 round fight if he gets in there with somebody like uh, James Kirkland or some of the other great fighters at 154. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I'd like when he goes back home, hopefully Nelson can, uh, you know, work on his, tighten up his defense a little bit. Because when you go in there with a guy like Kirkland, you don't want to have your hands down here by your chest and getting hit with careless shots. Because right, he's, he's a punch, he's a big puncher, and he's going to be right in your face the whole fight. And you saw referee Frank Santori Jr. once again taking a look at that bad right eye cut to make sure that Gonzalez is fit to continue here. Big right hand over the top by Kanat Islam. There's that left hook to the body again and again, Steve. Great work. He needs to mix, mix it up. Body head, body head. Gonzalez game trying to answer with an uppercut, but nothing really getting through the defense of Kanat Islam. Yeah, there's not really, there's a lot of that steam. All, that, all those body shots took a lot of the steam off of Gonzalez's uh, punches. Islam with that steady look. Still moving his head, a lot of upper body movement. Takes a jab, a glancing right hand from Gonzalez, but nothing solid. 
Kanat is in uh, great condition. I mean, both guys are really. Both guys are, are, are winging away in, in these final two rounds. Yeah, it's been an entertaining 12 round, or an entertaining scheduled 12 round bout. We're in round 11, halfway through the 11th. And Kanat Islam continues to dominate here. The only thing left, seeing if he can get a possible knockout against Gonzalez. Absolutely. And he looks like he's looking for that knockout right now. He's got to um, put, put those punches together, combinations. There are some guys, Steve, that just refuse to be knocked out, and it's very typical of Mexican fighters to have that characteristic. Yeah, and Gonzalez is one of those guys. I mean, he comes in here, and he's, he's, he's not just coming in. He's not just fighting for a paycheck, but he's fighting with pride. Under a minute to go now in the 11th round, scheduled for 12. Islam trying to put the pressure on. He goes with the jab, goes with the right hand, comes up a little short. Good defense, actually, right here by Gonzalez. But it is Islam in total charge. Now you're going to get a admonishment by Frank Santori Jr. for an elbow. Gonzalez short with the right hand, tried to throw it over the top. Again, missing with the right hand. Ten seconds to go in this 11th round. As Kanat Islam seeks to remain undefeated and move his record to 24 and 0. That was a good round. Another good round for Kanat. Last round, let's see. Let's see what he does this last round. Let's see if he wants to play it safe or if he wants to just go for the knockout. At this point, I think Kanat um, doesn't think Gonzalez can hurt him. Gonzalez hasn't really landed anything significant this whole fight, so. And when he has landed something, Steve, it just hasn't bothered Kanat at all. He hasn't moved backwards because of a big right hand one time in this fight. Yeah, Kanat's pretty much been able to do whatever he wants this whole fight. So Kanat Islam is three minutes away from more than likely keeping his, his undefeated record and taking home three more championship belts and adding them to his collection. Islam taking one last deep breath as we are ready for the 12th and final round. Frank Santori Jr. says touch gloves and here we go. Bobby Alexander, Steve Giffard bringing you the action from the Boca Raton Resort and Club. It's been a solid performance for Kanat Islam. As the rounds have moved on, he's taken more and more charge. Let's just see if perhaps he can come up with a combination that might put Gonzalez on the deck. Absolutely. Uh -oh. All right, you're going to see Frank Santori Jr. take a point away from Kanat Islam for using his elbow. Let's see if that. Uh... Now we got to figure out, you know, could that possibly affect the scorecards as we head to the end of this 12 round bout? I think that uh, Kanat can afford to lose a pointer. So I, um, he, he's I have him way ahead on my scorecards. Well, the three judges in charge of declaring the winner in this bout, Rocky Young, Toby Tamarkin and Mark Streisand, all veteran judges here in the state of Florida. And it's going to be interesting to see if that point has anything to do with the decision. Yeah, Gonzalez is still winging away, though. He's showing a lot of heart. He's very tough. And um, yeah, he's, he's coming in here and he's fighting with, with Mexican pride. But the clean punches, the effective punches are mostly landed by Islam. Though here, Gonzalez, oh, Gonzalez is having, having a, a great moment. round. Yes, he is. He, well, Gonzalez is having a great round. I mean, this is a true warrior. He has a cut on both eyes, and he's just here, and he's winging away. Well, you, I know your scorecard has Kanat well ahead, but if you look at this round, if Gonzalez wins this round on the scorecard, he gets a 10-8 round because of that point being taken away. So you never know. We have seen crazy decisions in this sport. Absolutely, and, um, you know, everyone is watching the fight from a different angle. Um, you, you don't know how everyone's scoring the fight. One might be scoring it with on um, effective pressure. One might be sc scoring it with uh, who's throwing the most punches. So you never know. You're right. You never know. 
Both fighters clinching in the middle of the ring. Frank Santori Jr. separating them. We're counting down to the 30-second mark. Santori pushing both fighters, saying, hey, behave in this last 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 20 seconds left. Let's. Gonzalez is still winging away. He's really trying to uh, get a KO here, because that's what he would need to win this. Just about at the end of this 12-round championship bout, Kanat Islam attempting to remain undefeated and take home three intercontinental bouts. Belts, rather. Kanat Islam trying to finish with a flourish. Blood pouring down the face of Gonzalez. And there you go. 12 rounds in the books. And you see the crimson, bloody face of the game warrior from Nuevo de León, Mexico, Norberto Demonio Gonzalez. Yeah, it was a, all he could handle in that fight, really. Yeah, it was a great win for Kanat. He got in the rounds this round, uh, um, this fight. He got in all the rounds, and, um, you know, it was another good win. And now he gets ready for, well, we got to see how the Georgia scored it, but on my scorecards, I had him winning clearly. And uh, he has to get ready for uh, Kirkland or whoever's next. There you see Roberto Gonzalez being worked over. And she said, Steve, he's definitely going to have to go probably uh, to the hospital to get stitched up, make sure he's OK. Don't know how much blood he could have lost in that fight, too. It was really cool. Oh, boring. yeah. Cut, cuts on top of both eyes. All right. Here we go with the final round action, Steve. Oh, you see Gonzalez going to the body with both hands. And um, the ref warning uh, Kanat for uh, using that elbow. And here you see Gonzalez landing a straight right, but still nothing on those shots. You know, another landing both hands again over there. And Kanat missing with some shots. There you see. And that long. elbow There's again. That There's elbow. that elbow again. <laughs> Yeah, he was guilty of that a few times. Yeah. But I don't think, it didn't seem like it was intentional. No, the only thing you got to be careful of, Steve, you get into a big fight with a guy like Kirkland or anyone else, you get in a situation like that where you throw that elbow, you lose a point, that really could be the determining factor of a big fight. Absolutely. That could be very crucial. There you see Kanad Islam with Nelson Lopez Sr. Enjoying a moment in his corner wearing the Kazakhstan flag around his shoulders, wearing one of the traditional Kazakh headpieces. Very proud of his Kazakhstan heritage. A lot of fans made the trip over from Central Asia to sit here at ringside and enjoy this bout at the Boca Grand Resort and Club in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. Any moment now, we're going to be set with the decision. OK. All right, it's just about time to find out who is the winner of this fight. Let's send it up to the ring with our ring announcer, Mark Frado. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a big South Florida round of applause for these two Warriors championship action here in Boca Raton. After 12 championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge at ringside, Rocky Young saw the contest 115-112. Judge Toby Tamarkin scored it 116-111, and Judge Mark Streisand saw it 118-109. All three judges for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new WBO, NABO, and WBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Champion, still undefeated from Kazakhstan and Pahokee, Florida, Kanat Kazakh Islam. All right, joining me now is the new champion, adorned with all kinds of hardware, Kanat Islam. Congratulations, a great fight. You had all your hands full with Norberto Gonzalez, but you took care of business as the fight went on. You wore him down. Was that your game plan coming in? 
Thank you. I first talk to my language for Kazakhstan. Khurmeta Kazakhstan Khtar. Me and Bulging Sunda. Visiting Yelvasmus, Mursalta Nazarwai, Yelvasmus Arnaiman. Yelm Zaman Bosn, Yelvasmus being Jing Stirge Jitibere, Alla Kazakela, Rahmet. Thank you, man. Uh, this is for my team, teamwork. I am work for 12 rounds. You know, I next opponent very strong. I come in 154 by anyone. I try for my distance, no go to key. This is boxing. This is you have to learn for move, defense, offense. I try for defense, offense, everything. This is for boxing. This is for ne next step for my big fight. I am the test myself, you know. Uh, thank you, my coach, my team. I am as now work, uh, come back, uh, my country, Kazakhstan. This year, big time for my country, Expo. Everybody, American, welcome to Kazakhstan by Expo. Thank you. Great performance. Let's talk to the man who makes things happen for Nelson's promotions, Nelson Lopez Sr. Nelson, what were your impressions of your fighter tonight? Well, my impression was that, number one, he never sat down in the whole fight. He's in good condition. His defense is great. If anybody thinks they wants a piece of this, come on, let's do it. I would like to announce something else. We got in the house, we got James Kirkland. He thinks he wants a piece let's of this. Go, and champ. Let's go, champ. Yes. There's James Kirkland, former junior middleweight champion of the world. He's ready to get back in and mix up some action. What do you think of his performance tonight? He did a uh, fantastic job, and I congratulate him and the other opponent. They got out there and participated and gave it they all. But at the end of the day, if he wants a piece of me, and I would love to have a piece of him, we can definitely make this match happen. It could be one of the fights of the year, Nelson Lopez. Are you ready to make that happen, maybe? Yes, I think we're going to do... We, <laughs> July 21st, we believe that we're going to go to Coconut Creek. James Kirkley will fight. Canal will fight. And both will hopefully will be winners. We fight in Kazakhstan September 9th. Again, uh, Jane Borjan Ospan Varama, Alasim Chexis, Rahmis Dere, Alga Kazaki, Alga Kazakar. Kanak, congratulations on a great fight, undefeated still, and we look forward to seeing you in the next couple of months. Go enjoy your victory. Thank you, sir. Coming. Kanak Islam remains undefeated 24 wins, no losses. 19 wins by way of knockout. A great win and big things ahead later this year for Islam. Tonight's exciting boxing event has been presented by Nelson's Promotions. The executive producer is Brian Rico. Tonight's event has been produced and directed by Ira Glass. Thank you for joining us from beautiful Boca Raton. Considerations for promotional provided by the Boca Raton Resort and Club here in Boca Raton, Florida. For my partner, Steve Giffard, I'm Bob Alexander saying thank you for being with us from Boca Raton, Florida. Good night, everyone. <laughs>